In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to set up a vinyl cutter with the US Cutter Edition of Vinyl Master Cut. Now I'm going to assume you've had no experience setting up a cutter in the past and that you've never used a software program like this. So when you first load up Vinyl Master Cut and activate it and have the program ready to use, you'll see the design center here on the right hand side and you'll see this link here, Assemble Your Cutter. So that's a very good thing to watch, I recommend you do that. Um, go there and watch that. Uh, so that you can see how to set up and physically assemble your vinyl cutter. So let's pop that away. The other thing I'll assume is that you have no vinyl cutter installed. You can do that when you first uh, install the software itself. It'll actually ask you to set up a, a cutter, the make and model. Uh, and you may well have done that. So if you come up to this button here and click on the vinyl spooler, and the vinyl spooler will appear. Now at this point in time I've got no uh, job selected, so that's why there's nothing showing here. So if I click on this connection tab up here, you'll see there's no cutter being shown in here and there's no settings being set. So what I need to do now is plug in my cutter. So today I've got an MH, a US Cutter MH721 uh, cutter. So I need to plug that in, switch it on, load some material and set the start point of the cutter somewhere over my, my vinyl that I want to cut out. Now I can load in some paper and I can use a, a pen. I don't need to cut anything out for this for actually setting up the cutter. And it's not a bad idea. Put in, put in a sheet of paper and load the pen in, set the force to about 40 um, and the speed to around about three or 400 um, and that should be fine. And what you need to do is make sure the machine is online. So you'll see with the arrow keys you can move the head around when it's offline then you can press the origin key, that sets the origin to 0, 0, and then you need to press the online button. It's very similar to a Titan, and most cutters work that same way, especially the ones that US Cutter sells. So assuming that I've got uh, MH, and you may have an SC or any of these other models, if I click add here on this button, you can see the install cutter driver window pops up. So I need to select my make, and as I said, I've got a US Cutter, and I have an MH721 and you can see it selected that there. Now in a moment I'll show you how to set up a Titan um, which is a little bit different and I'm, the reason why I've got two cutters today is to show you the differences between the two. So I click install here and it says the US cutter MH721 has been installed. Great, click OK and you'll see here it is here. Now the US cutter uh, models mainly use direct com it's really only the Titan that uses direct USB from US Cutter and of course you've got other brands if I click add if you look at something like a Suma that uses a different type of port, Mamaki has its own port Roland and Graftec both use direct USB and it kind of depends on what model you've got too, some, some of those things can change so what you're using here will be determined by the type of cutter you've got but generally speaking uh, with Vinyl Master it's either direct USB or direct com the bulk of them are direct com, the more expensive cutters use direct USB. They're, they're a different type of tech or different way of communicating. Okay, so with an MH cutter we go to direct com and you can see here I've got a couple of COM ports that have been installed. And if I actually disconnect the USB cable plugged into the cutter like so, you'll see it actually disappear from the port name there. So if I plug it back in, wait a moment, or just click off it for a moment, you'll see it comes back. So that's a very easy way of working out which port you've actually got plugged into the cutter. Now if you're unsure you can always use auto detect and follow through those instructions so when you uh, click on that this window comes up and you just basically follow through the instructions directly. Do what it says, turn off the device, next, 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 next and so on and it will detect what port the cutter's on. Now if the cutter does not get detected it may well be because it's not plugged in properly or there's some issue with the port on your computer. It could be any number of things. And one thing to do is to use a short USB cable and make sure that you hear the computer make the ding-dong sound when you plug it in. If you don't hear the ding-dong sound, what you really need to do is come up to here and go to Device Manager. And in Device Manager, you should see it appear in the ports here like so. If you don't see it there, what you're going to have to do is use the driver that came with the cutter it should be on a little disk and install the driver so if you can't find that come up to system go to advanced and click on install USB chip drivers 
and you may have to follow that through. You'll see this window come up and most cutters are either FTDI or STM. Okay, and you may have to install those particular chip drivers. Now if you do get stuck with that, you're just not sure where to go, what you need to do is go to future.support. So I'll bring that up for you now. So if you come to this website here, future.support, you can open a ticket and you can get some instructions from us. But generally speaking, you won't have any issues with uh, US cutter cutters. They're, they're usually quite good and there's not usually a problem with any of these things. What you will need to do after this is work out what the board rate and flow control etc is. And the easiest way to do that and save you a lot of time is you simply click detect here and you follow this through. So please ensure you have some spare material loading the cutter etc etc which I've done. Click next and it's going to perform some tests. So I click next. It says ready to cut. Did the cutter respond? No, it didn't respond. No. Okay, did that time, so click yes. And again, yes. Yes. So it's told me by running this series of tests that it's on COM4 and the board rate's 38.4 and the flow control equals 2. So click done and there you go. That cutter is now set up to use. So if I go to repeats and go to test cut, and I recommend you do this, it's a little tiny job here, um, what you can do is just click cut now proceed with cutting and as we can hear the cutter's gone off and it's cutting that out or in my case I've got a pen and paper and then I'm having this uh, plotted out on pen and paper so that's really how hard it is to set up a cutter it's really not difficult at all and as I say if you do get stuck by all means lodge a ticket and we'll certainly help you out now the next cutter you need to install will be the Titan cutter so what I'm going to do is plug that in and turn that on now so I'll turn that on. So now I've got the Titan. As you can hear, the Titan cutter is now plugged in and ready to go, again with pen and paper. So I click Add. Select my make, Titan. And today I have an SC53 inch. So click Install. It's now installed. And you'll see it's set to a direct USB port. I come down on this drop down box you can immediately see or what's happened is is that the Windows has recognized the device and it's now in this list so all, all I have to do is click that the device is connected and for a Titan that's it that's how hard it is if I go to my repeats again and test cut and I go cut now so we can hear our cutter off it goes We don't want to listen to that, so I've just turned it off. Okay, so that's how we set up a Titan cutter. It's really quite simple. And again, if you get stuck, by all means, please come to future.support, open a ticket, and a technician will get back in touch with you as soon as they possibly can. Generally speaking, Titan cutters are very, very easy to set up and use. Remember, you add direct USB port, and you just need to select this and you can see it's greyed out now because I've turned off the cutter and that's why that's greyed out because the cutter is turned off and once you've set up your cutter um, you can then you will find that if I say I want to cut out that for example I want to send it to my Titan I click uh, cut now you'll find it will load in here and I can see the preview and there it is right there what I was about to cut out on my Titan SE now when you send your cut files to your vinyl cutter whether it be a Titan or a MH or an SC or whatever it happens to be and the results aren't quite as good as you'd expect them to be what you can do is calibrate the cutter and quite often that does have to be done it really does depend though I mean some cutters come out of the box and work absolutely perfectly occasionally they don't so to fix that up or to calibrate the cutter you come up to this tab here calibration and you'll see all these different options here so when we talk about calibrating your device we're talking about many different things one is the blade offset so that's how sharp the text or small shapes are cut around their corners. The other issue is the cutter scale. So if you design something at say 10 inches by 10 inches and it cuts out at 10.1 by 10.1 or something like that, then you can calibrate the cutter scale so you can get it much more accurate. The other thing to calibrate is the laser offsets. So if you've got a laser pointer cutter, it's not an arms cutter, it's a laser pointer cutter. So it uses a manual system of uh, doing contour cutting. The software needs to know 
how far away the laser pointer is from the blade. So you can use these tools to do that. And very similar to that, if you do have an arms cutter like a Titan, for example, you need to set the distance that the actual arm sensor is away from the blade. So it's a similar sort of setting. So let's go to the connection tab and I'll, the first thing I'll show you is a standard US cutter like an SC, for example. Now I'll just go back to calibration. It's important to note that some of these settings apply equally to a standard US cutter as they do to a Titan. I mean, for example, blade offset and cutter scale, uh, these two are they work the same. So if I click on blade offset here, I need to follow through this wizard. So you'll find it explains to you exactly what to do and what we're trying to set out is to avoid this sort of situation. This is a very small letter here but you can see that it hasn't really cut very well. But on this side with the blade offset set correctly, clearly it cuts much more sharp and it looks a lot better. So you need to follow this through. So read this down and perform the calibration and you can see in the background what it's going to do. You cut that out and you follow those instructions. So that's how you do blade offset. Go back here to cut a scale. So to do the cut a scale, this is the situation where you know you set it at say 10 inches for example and it cuts out at 10.1 or 9.8 or whatever it happens to be. The scale's not correct. Again, you need to read through this information here and cut the test out. That will set your scale. Now the next thing you might want to do is if I've got say an SC with a laser pointer I might do the quick or the full laser offset. Now this really depends on how much trouble I want to go to. So once again you click on this and you follow it through. And the same with this one here. You follow it through. Now if I've got a Titan machine and I want to calibrate the arms offset what I need to do is go back to my cutter driver and select the Titan and go back to calibration and you'll see the arms offset comes up. Now the only time I use this particular tool here where I use these L-shaped marks is if I've got an old Titan cutter. So I'm talking about pre-2015. It's a quite an old machine. That in that case I follow this through and use these tools here to calibrate the arms offset. If I've got a more modern Titan cutter uh, like an SC or the Titan 3 for example I would actually come up to the barcode controller. So if I click on that the barcode controller loads up like this. And all I have to do to calibrate the cutter is come here and click on Auto Calibrate Laser Offset. Now to do this I'm going to need some paper and, a, and the pen loaded into the cutter and I need to set the pen in around the centre of the piece of paper whether it's a piece of le like a letter or A4 or whatever it happens to be. I click Do you wish to proceed? And what it does is it pre-tests the area for me so I can make sure that it's going to work. And when I'm ready to go I click Yes and then the cutter springs into life as you can see here. It does the test and when it's completed, the laser offset is calibrated, as you can see here. And once it's completed, the laser offset will be written to the cutter and ready to go. So click OK. So as mentioned, if you're not getting a great result, whether it's the blade offset, the cutter scale, or the arms offset or laser offset, this is where you set those things. Now on top of these options, there are some cut options here. Now here we can set things like the media width and the length. We can set different modes depending on what sort of cutter we've got. The other thing we can set is the overcut. So that's the distance the cutter goes past the end of a particular shape. So you may make it go a little bit past the shape so that it finishes the cut off properly. We can also set the cutting force and the cutting speed here depending on what cutter we've got. And when you select that cutter you will get these different options. And these things are dynamic. These, these settings will change depending on what cutter you've got. So what you see here right now may be different for the cutter you have. But this is where we set those cut options. So that covers where all the cutting options are. There are some very advanced options in here. And if you click on Edit Advanced Settings, you'll see all sorts of advanced settings. But only use these with the direction of our technicians. Don't go in here and start changing all these things because you'll end up just making a mess of it um, and you'll have to start from scratch. But at least you know where to get to those. So again, that's from either this button here or from the setting, oh sorry, from the cutter, configure cutter and edit advanced settings. So if you're asked to change something like the device language 
from tech support this is where you do it so that's the end of this lesson thanks for watching Thank you.